Hi, it's The Wire. June the 13th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me point out, I'm going to highlight a fighter here who I think is extremely underrated. Who I think has the capability to really do some top shelf stuff in the sport of boxing. And I believe he's misunderstood. But to frame this the right way, what I'm going to do is talk about something that's not even boxing related, just to convey the attitude that I think gamblers like us need to take in evaluating this guy. Right now, understand, years ago, a uh, director still in his 30s had an opportunity to work with a legendary actor, right? It was controversial uh, subject matter. The uh, director was Italian, Francis Ford Coppola. The uh, actor was, we'll call him controversial, right? Marlon Brando. And just to understand, the movie is The Godfather. Um, some people in the Italian community were upset that the movie was being made, right? Understand, uh, even some mobsters, I'm talking about real-life mobsters, uh, were upset that the movie was being made because they thought that it portrayed Italians in a odd light. So the movie is controversial. Um, just understand that Francis Ford Coppola was expecting the role of Vito Corleone to be played a certain way, and he shows up on the set, and to his surprise, Marlon Brando has toilet paper in his mouth. Marlon Brando sticks his jaw out. Marlon Brando is mumbling some of the lines. Right? So Coppola, recognizing that Brando is a great actor who had a different vision than Coppola had of how the role should be played. Coppola goes with it, right? What you get is one of the great acting performances in cinematic history, as far as I'm concerned. What you get is literally the remaking of the, we'll call it Godfather role in mob movies, right? The patriarch the head of the organization, how he carries himself, right? Brando is calm, his eyes look distant. Um, the whole thing is crazy, right? Well, understand, later, I think it's during the filming of Godfather Part Two. the centerpiece of that movie hinges on the problems between two brothers, right? Al Pacino and John Casal, right? Now, Casal is a name you need to know. So during the filming of the scene, Casal starts rocking violently. That's not in the script, right? He starts rocking in his seat. It's bizarre, right? Coppola goes with it. An argument can be made that in a movie with Robert De Niro, and Al Pacino, and Diane Keaton. The person who walks away with Godfather Part Two, arguably, is John Casale, who dies shortly after the movie's made. When you see the scene, the rocking is so unexpected, and it's so visceral, that you understood, wow, you know, Coppola, <laughs> Coppola was lucky that he understood that you have to just let talent shine. You have to let the actor interpret the role. Now, the United Kingdom has a fighter, and 
I want people to understand what I'm about to say here. Okay, it's not discussed enough. I'm a skeptic of the Olympic Games as it is. This fighter was fighting a guy who had already won the Olympic gold medal in an earlier Olympics. Right? He was fighting a guy who really was the establishment fighter. And in my opinion, and I challenge people to look at the tape of the fight, I have it in my favorites folder right now. In my opinion, Ben Whitaker clearly wins that Olympic gold medal game over the great Arlen Foster. Right now, just uh, just understand, just, excuse me, Arlen Lopez, just understand that Whitaker, a tall guy, has a unique skill set where he can lean forward against a front foot master, which is who Lopez was, right? It's unclear whether Whitaker is going to face a guy with this talent level in the pros, right? Outside of possibly David Benavides, right? Well, just understand, Whitaker is moving around the ring. He is landing body shots on a guy who is coming forward on his front foot. And he has the timing where the guy who's a master counterpuncher can't find him, even though Whitaker is 6'3". And this is one of those rare fights where I look at the fight and I see Whitaker winning every round. Now, I'm, I'm just one fan, right? I see Whitaker winning every round. And keep in mind, Lopez is the kind of guy who can come in righty, he can come in lefty, he is extremely advanced, right? The uh, people scoring the fight, of course, gave it to Lopez, who now has two gold medals. But yet, as you're watching what people thought was going to be a coronation, for Lopez, you're noticing that the taller guy is faster. You're noticing that the taller guy is on his back foot and doesn't blink. In other words, Lopez is coming forward and the guy on his back foot is not getting hit, is landing body shots, is moving around the ring, is not getting caught up on the ropes. Folks, it's really a master class by Ben Whitaker. Now, they robbed Whitaker. Understand, that's how you need to view Whitaker. He's a guy who gets robbed. Because no one roots for Goliath. I believe all of us look at Whitaker. See the hand speed. See the foot speed. See the coordination. And we feel, you know, this guy's been given too much in life. I'm serious about this. This guy's been given too much in life. We don't like his attitude. He's narcissistic. It's all about him. He's embarrassing this opponent. He's acting as if we love him when we don't. Right? Understand, Prince Nassim Hamed came in the ring and he was, you know, full of himself. He was, you know, in an earlier generation. He was narcissistic. He was here to put on a show you know, uh, flashy ring entrances. But we looked at him as a guy who was a smaller guy. Hamed came across as an underdog. He didn't have all the height. He didn't have the obvious hand speed advantage over his opponent. Right? He was a guy with great punching power. We viewed him as the underdog, even with the bombastic behavior. The flashy ring entrances were new. We weren't tired of them yet. 
right? You looked at him and you thought, okay, he thinks highly of himself, right? But you thought, okay, this is a guy who is from Sheffield, I, I believe. Um, you know, you thought, you know, this guy's probably from a working class background. Ahmed would have his father there. Uh, his father didn't look like, you know, he came from royalty. You, you were rooting for him because you thought this is the underdog who has put on a Superman's cape, who is one of the hardest punching guys in the sport, right? To this day, Ahmed's one of the hardest punchers I've seen pound for pound, right? And you rooted for him. You don't root for Ben Whitaker because Whitaker is like Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic, right? Understand, Leonardo DiCaprio did not win the Oscar for Titanic, right? A co-star did. Understand, Steven Spielberg did not win an Oscar for years while putting out movies like Close Encounters and other movies, right? Understand, Spielberg was so highly thought of that he did the Columbo pilot, the detective show with Peter Falk, and he did freaky things in that pilot, right? You know, long camera angles and stuff like that. We praise savants on the way up, but then we don't give them the breaks that we give underdogs. So here's what I want people to think about. Ben Whitaker, at times he looks tasteless. He has an overmatched opponent in front of him and he'll dance away and do his own dance. He'll lean forward when he's close to the pocket and he'll tap the guy on the head so that everyone in the arena understands that he feels he has the timing down completely. He is tall and slender, um, you know, doesn't look like Prince Hamed. Um, this is kind of like a Leonardo DiCaprio guy who you think has had all the breaks in life, even though he has it, right? To the United Kingdom, let me just say that this light heavyweight right now is one of your best boxers. It's an absolute farce that he's fighting in eight round fights and stuff like that right now. To Ben Whitaker, let me just say, um, I'm gonna be betting on you for the foreseeable future Right, You have a lot of talent. I'll agree, there will be a fight where he gets caught right? because he drops his hands. Not for boxing purposes, but to impress you, the crowd. He wants people to understand that he can drop his hands and not get hit. Let me point out, though, that this is one of those guys who understands movement. Right? He can lean back, and he does. He's the 6'3 guy who knows he's 6'3. Now on this frame, again, let me talk to the fighter here, just hypothetically, this is for entertainment purposes, really for my subscribers, but if I were talking to the fighter, I would tell him, look, don't think about the weight at which you're comfortable. Think about the weight at which your opponents are uncomfortable, right? He's fighting at light heavy. Light heavy's loaded right now, right? Benavides, who I mentioned earlier. Um, Grovesdick, his opponent for his upcoming fight, is very dangerous, folks. Be aware of that. The line on that fight is totally off. Of course, you have Dimitri Bevel, a guy we thought here would beat Canelo, and that's what he did. Right by, let's face it, a wider margin than the scorecard suggests. And of course, you have Arthur Perturbiev, right? One of the sport's true champions. Anthony Yard is rising up. Perturbiev crosses the ocean to fight him. Joe Smith has a name. Perturbiev goes to the New York area to fight him there. Right? Finally, he returns home. You have to give the home fan something. Who's he fighting? Callum Smith. 
right? But Tarabia, if I understand, it's not just an unbeaten record. It's a perfect knockout streak. Stoppages in every pro fight. So 175 is a little bit crowded. What I want Ben Whitaker to think about, and I'll agree, it's ridiculous that they don't have a weight class between 175 and Cruiser at 200. But at Cruiser, Whitaker would be too fast for everyone not named J.O. Pattaya. Right? Understand, you think he's too fast at light heavyweight. Could you imagine if he went to Cruiser? Now, I personally believe fighters have it wrong, right? I think Obataya should be at heavy, quite frankly. I think fighters have it wrong. I think they ask themselves, hey, well, what do I normally weigh when I'm in shape? If the scale says 175, they say, hey, that's where I'm going to fight. Right? You also have the Benavides approach. Benavides, when he was younger, weighed well north of 200 pounds. Benavides is a guy who drains himself to make weight, right? I don't think Benavides ever fights Canelo at 168 because I personally don't believe Benavides can get back down to 168, right? I think Benavides is at 175 out of necessity because that's the lowest weight he can make. What I see in Whitaker is a guy who can pick his weight class, right? I want Whitaker to consider playing games with that, right? That Olympic Games in which he got jobbed ends up with the silver instead of the gold. That was years ago, right? Whitaker's been fighting it light heavy for some time. What I want Whitaker to consider is the possibility of fighting at 200 without gaining any weight whatsoever. Whitaker strikes me as one of these guys who's always in shape. Think of Vanda Holyfield. Right? If I'm Whitaker, you know, I know I can be in shape. Since I'm making 175, I'll make 200. I don't have to weigh 200. I don't even have to think about the weight during training camp. Folks, it's all there with this guy. He He's ambidextrous. He is cat quick. He has arguably the best legs in boxing. Right? I want people to think about Bevo, how he moves around the ring, and then think about Whitaker. As a guy who can move around the ring like Bevo, but who can be off-key. Who actually has some play in his head. A theatrical play. Where he has practice moves. Where he moves away and taunts an opponent and stuff like that. This is, this is the boxer with boxing's equivalent of touchdown dances. Right? And folks, he pulls it off seamlessly. Right, so you're talking about phenomenal athlete, freak athlete, unlike Nassim Hamed, right? Hamed, showman. Nobody can touch Hamed as a showman. I'll agree with that. But you never got the feeling he was a freak athlete. Ben Whitaker is a freak athlete. This is the showman who is trying to embarrass you with rehearsed athletic dance moves. Right now, as you look at him, figuratively speaking, rocking in his chair, adding texture to his performance, let's not fault him for that. You don't have to love the guy to understand that this is a unique talent. Right? I'm telling you, people here know I'm a Benavides fan. Benavides does not move remotely as well as this guy does. 
right? Benavides is a boxing savant who knows the angles, right? But understand the problem with Benavides is he's not a freak athlete. A Caleb plant can go the distance with him, right? This guy Whitaker is a freak athlete. Folks, the upside is tremendous. Understand, the boxing ability is already there. I believe he's fighting the level of competition he's fighting right now. Not for him. He's ready right now. It's not for him. It's for us. Because it would be too audacious for a young guy to just try to enter the room on the top floor, right? We've seen it before, right? Lomachenko, of course, fought Salido in his second fight, and he lost it, right? Got riddled to the body, didn't have answers for Orlando Salida coming in inside. Understand how boxing works. You have a group of investors in the back. You have a promoter who wants to raise the profile of his fighter, wants to build up the fighter's name. In Whitaker's case, they might realize that he's a narcissist, kind of like Ali was a narcissist, right? Let's remember, Ali beats Liston. What does he say in his post-fight interview? It's not, Sonny's a great champ, and it's an honor to be in the ring with him. No, he says, look at me. I'm 22 years old, and I'm as pretty as a girl. That's what Ali said. Right? Whitaker has the same mindset. Sometimes talent's self absorbed. Right? Look, I'm a gambler. I just want to win bets. Folks, you're not going to find faster hands and faster feet with the boxing IQ that this guy has elsewhere. Right? This is the freak athlete. I love Terrence Crawford. Longtime viewers here know some of the easiest money that has been made in the sport over the last five years has been simply betting on Crawford. Right? Um, I thought the Crawford Errol Spence fight was a mismatch. And it was. Crawford's not this level of freak athlete. Right? I'm not saying that Whitaker knows the sport better than Crawford. What I'm just saying is that Whitaker is the kind of guy who can throw punches from his waist, and it matters. Because when you see a guy throwing punches from his waist, the other guy cannot figure out the angles, particularly when that fighter can move like Whitaker. Right? Whitaker is a better athlete than Crawford. Understand the upside here. I believe Whitaker today would be competitive in a weight class 25 pounds more than his current weight class. Right? Keep an eye on this guy. He's better than advertised. Should have a gold medal hanging around his neck. Got ripped off because, of course, he was fighting the establishment fighter. Right? is faster than you think, knows boxing better than you think, you need to look by all the taunting. And, you know, the idea that he's a guy who sees the structure of boxing and is willing to work around it. Right? Understand, the people who are so talented that they don't have to abide by some orthodoxy to be successful, those are the ones you want to watch. So keep an eye on Ben Whitaker. You're looking at several years of excellent fights. Now, let's be clear here. Ali would drop his hands. In the 60s, Ali gets dropped by Sonny Banks. He gets dropped by Henry Cooper and saved in that fight by Angelo Dundee, right, who deliberately is moving in slow motion, right? Something's wrong with Ali's glove. I believe there's an interview where Dundee admitted that his fighter had his bell rung, so Dundee 
did something to the glove, right? It's a nod and a wink type deal. But understand, guys like this, Larry Holmes would drop his hands. People might remember he gets dropped by Ernie Shavers. He gets dropped by Ron, excuse me, uh, Ronaldo Snipes, right? Guys like Whitaker are going to get hit and dropped because of the risks they take in the ring, which are substantial, right? Recognize that with this talent level, he's going to bounce back. This is a fighter to watch. He's underrated right now. His critics, of course, look at him and they feel he doesn't know what he doesn't know. That he's not showing enough sportsmanship. They want to punish him. Right? The British press, let's face it, they take sides. They love fighters. Here's a guy who doesn't come across like Prince Charles would. If Prince Charles were a boxer. Right? The British really believe in structure. This guy looks unstructured. Right? This guy is the kind of guy who will openly mock an overwhelmed opponent. If you're a fan of boxing, all I'm saying is see the good things he's bringing. Right? Francis Ford Coppola looked at Marlon Brando and understood. However, I think this role of mob boss should be played. Brando has a different idea here. It's original. It's fresh. Let me give it a chance. Give this fighter a chance, folks. The talent is there. I have that Olympic gold medal fight in my favorites folder. Give it a look. Right? Just ask yourself, who's landing punches? When you see Whitaker start to go to Lopez's body, right? Just understand that Lopez has no answers for it. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.